All right, in this video, we study how to calculate the length of a curve that is given as a pair of parametric functions in two-dimensional space. This is a very common application of integrals. Okay, let's start. So suppose we have two functions, x of t and y of t. And so these are functions of this variable t, and we assume that these functions are of the class c1. So that means at least once continuously differentiable. And uh, continuously differentiable means the derivative is also continuous. Okay, And of course, these functions are also continuous because differentiable functions are always continuous. Anyway, so these functions are C1 class and defined on this closed interval between A and B. So here's the problem. So if we consider this, this, this pair of functions as a point in two-dimensional space, okay, so x and y, x coordinate, y coordinate, as we move this t from A to B, then this point in the space, in the two-dimensional space, will meet will be moving like this, for example. So when t is equal to a, the point starts at some, some point here. And as t increases, then it moves in the plane. And when t becomes equal to zero, uh, equal to b, then it stops at somewhere in that space. So the question we are considering here is how do we calculate the length of this curve, starting from t equal to a and t equal to b. So how do we do that? Uh, let's consider a little bit simpler function like this. Uh, but to begin with, uh, so how do we calculate the distance between two points? So let's say this is uh, x of a and y of a here. And this is, say, x of b and y of b. Okay, So the distance between two points can be measured as the length of the straight line, right? And so that will be the length of this line segment will be this. So that's the uh, distance between two points. So x b minus x a squared plus y of b minus y of a squared and take the add them and take the square root. So we know how to calculate the length of a line segment, a straight line segment. And uh, we apply this idea uh, of measuring the length of the line segment by splitting, uh, apply this idea to measuring the length of a curve by splitting a curve into small pieces, okay, like this. So let's split, partition this curve into pieces. So that corresponds to splitting the interval between A and B into uh, smaller pieces, like, uh, so A, let's say A is equal to T0, and uh, take some value here, t1, uh, t2, t3, and t4, and so on. And uh, in, in the end, we should get t, let's say, tn. tn will correspond to t equal to b, and uh, t0 corresponds to uh, t equal to a. Okay. So this is an increasing sequence of real numbers. Okay, so we know how to calculate this line segment between, uh, let's use a different color. Uh, let's see. So this line segment, we know how to calculate. This line segment, we know how to calculate. So we approximate the length of a curve by the sum of uh, the length of line segments, like this. So the idea is, if we take smaller and smaller partitions, so if we refine the partition, 
uh, more and more, then this approximation will converge to some value and which can be considered as the length of the curve. So that's the basic idea. So let's materialize this idea. Uh, so let's say we have this uh, point corresponding to t, t i, and the next point will correspond to t plus uh, t i plus one. Okay. So the distance between these two points here is given by this square root of x of t i plus one minus x of t i. Uh, so this difference squared plus uh, y of ti plus 1 minus y of ti. A difference squared and take the square root. So this is the length of this line segment here between uh, two points corresponding to ti and ti plus 1. So now we add this length from uh, t uh, 0 to Tn, okay? So we take the summation, i varying from 0 to n minus 1, okay? Uh, because the last Tn is is b, so we start from this, this, and, and that here, okay? So now let's uh, rearrange this expression a little bit. That is, we multiply ti plus 1 minus ti and divide by the same quantity. Okay, and put this one in the denominator inside the square root. Okay, so if we put it inside the square root, uh, that gets squared, right? So that would be, let's see, uh, let's copy this. And copy and paste. So that will be equal to everything divided by ti plus 1 minus ti squared. So, so that's everything inside the square root times ti plus 1 minus ti. Now let's split this. Now we have uh, this this thing divided by this thing and squared, and this thing divided by this thing squared. So let's see. We have x t i plus one minus x t i divided by t i plus one minus t i. Everything squared, and y t plus uh, t i plus 1 minus y t i divided by t i plus 1 minus t i squared and everything square root times t i plus 1 minus uh, t i plus 1 minus t i and summation. Okay, now look at this. This is the ratio between the change in x coordinate and the change in this parameter t. And same for this y. Now, we can apply the mean value theorem. So by the mean value theorem, there exists some s, let's say si, in this open interval between ti and ti plus 1, such that the derivative of x at uh, si is equal to this ratio x t i plus 1 minus x t i over t i plus 1 minus t i. And also there exists some other uh, s, let's say s prime within the same interval such that uh, the derivative of y with respect to t, evaluated at s i prime is equal to the difference between y uh, at t i and t i plus 1 and the difference between t i plus 1 and t i. Okay, so we have this. 
and this. Okay, so therefore this summation can be uh, expressed in terms of these derivatives. Okay, so let's say uh, let's name this quantity as L. Okay, so L can be expressed in terms of these derivatives. So square root and dx dt and si uh, squared and dy dt at si prime squared plus uh, let's write the difference between ti and ti plus 1 as t delta ti and now let's define a function h of t as this square root of uh, dx uh, dt as a function of t squared and dy dt as a function of t squared. Okay, and then f uh, define the maximum and minimum of this function within a subinterval. Okay, so let's put capital M I as the maximum of this functional value h of t, where t is between uh, t i and t i plus 1. And uh, minimum value, minimum of this function h of t, where t varies from t i to t i plus 1. Okay, so if we use these values, then we can say that uh, uh, so this L, uh, this L, uh, let's say this L is dependent on the partition. Let's call it the partition delta, and this L delta is less than uh, this summation i from zero to n plus one, and uh, this maximum value m i times delta t i and but this l delta is greater than this summation i from 0 to n plus 1 and lowercase m i times delta t i now if we refine this partition delta uh, into smaller and smaller uh, uh, intervals then this one and this one will converge to the same value and so that means this L delta should also converge to the same value. Then that value is uh, defined to be the length of the curve. And if you look at this expression, then you know this summation becomes integral and this delta t becomes dt. And so after all, the length of the curve will be given as the integral of this function dx dt squared and uh, dy dt squared dt and integrate from a to b. So the length of the curve is given by this formula. Of course, uh, the curve must be defined in terms of a pair of parametric functions. Okay, so let's consider a simple example. First example is this, x of t is given as r cosine t, where r is a positive uh, real number, and y t is r sine t. So what is this curve? This is just a circle, right? And uh, suppose uh, this t a parameter t takes value between 0 and 2 pi, okay? So this is just a circle centered at the origin uh, with radius r, okay, so radius r. So when t is equal to zero, it's here. So as t increases, it goes around this circle. And when t is equal to two pi, it reaches the same point. So the length of the curve defined by these two equations is just this circumference of the circle. So we know that that should be equal to 2 pi times r, right? So let's see if we can really get this value by applying this formula. 
Okay. So x prime is uh, negative r sine t, and y prime is r cosine t. So if we apply the formula, the length of this curve will be integral from 0 to 2 pi of square root of this squared, so r squared sine squared t plus r squared cosine squared t. Uh, wait a minute, uh, dt. Okay. However, so r is assumed to be positive. Okay, so we can take this out. Uh, that is r and the uh, square root of sine squared t plus cosine squared t. But that is just equal to 1. So this is equal to 1. Uh, equal to 1. So we have r dt. You know, there's no t inside. So this is just r and t from 0 to 2 pi. That is 2 pi r as expected. Okay, here is a next example. x of t is equal to a t minus sine t and y is equal to a times y minus cosine t where a is positive and t is between uh, 0 and 2 pi. Uh, this curve is called a cycloid, and uh, this can be obtained as this. So if we have a circle of radius A, okay, and take one point on the circle and roll this circle without slipping, okay, rolling, then we track the trajectory of this point on the circle. So as circle rolls, this point moves like this. And it reaches the maximum value of y at uh, 2 pi, of course, at, uh, not 2 pi, 2a. So that's the, the diameter of this circle. And then it reaches at y equal to 0 when, so let's say this is x equal to 0, and uh, this will be x equal to uh, 2a pi. 2 pi a. Okay, so it looks like this. It looks a little bit like a circle, but uh, it's not a circle. It's called a cycloid. Anyway, so let's calculate the length of this curve. Okay, this curve. Define and that is defined by these equations. Okay, so first of all, uh, differentiate. Uh, x prime would be a minus a uh, a 1 minus cosine t and y prime is uh, so it is negative cosine so it will be a sine t okay so the length of this curve would be integral from 0 to 2 pi square root of this so so a squared and here and here will come outside so let's write it like this and uh, 1 minus cosine t squared and sine uh, square t dt so let's first expand this part and uh, that will be Let's see. So that will be 1 minus 2 cosine t plus cosine squared t. But cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So we have 2 here, and these are canceled. So let's factorize 2 out. And we have 1 minus cosine t dt. So how do we proceed from here? This 1 minus cosine t square root of this uh, is a little bit hard to integrate. So let's consider taking uh, somehow getting rid of this square root. And that can be done uh, if we use this formula. So consider cosine t as cosine t as cosine 2 times t over 2 
and use the uh, trigonometric identity. And uh, we have, let's see, cosine squared minus sine squared. And, uh, you know, we have 1 minus this. So let's say, let's get rid of this cosine squared. And uh, it will be 1 minus 2 sine squared. Right. So 1 minus cosine t would be equal to uh, 2 sine squared of t over 2. Okay, so we can replace 1 minus cosine t with this. Okay, so let's see. A, and we have 2 here, and we have 2 here, so that 2 will come out. And sine squared will be inside this square root. Now, uh, let's see. We want to get rid of this uh, square root and we have squ sine squared here so that would be uh, let's change this that would be absolute value of sine t over 2 but still we have this absolute value and how can we get rid of it for that let's plot this function uh, sine t over 2 so this is t and usually the sine curve is like this Okay, and it has a period of 2 pi, but here we have 1 over 2, so multiplied by 1 over 2. So the period of the sine t over 2 is 4 pi, and uh, here's 2 pi, and uh, this is sine t over 2, and the maximum is reached at pi. So for the values of t from 0 to 2 pi, it's always positive. So we can simply just discard this absolute, absolute value sign here. So let's just integrate it. And uh, we have 2a and uh, negative uh, cosine t over 2 and uh, times 2 here from 0 to 2 pi. So we have 2, 4a, negative 4a. And uh, cos sine, so 2 pi divided by 2, that's pi, minus cosine and 0. So this is just pi, and uh, cosine of pi is negative 1, and cosine 0 is 1, so we have negative 1 here. So negative, negative, we have positive, and uh, 2 times 4 is 8, so the result is 8a. Eight, eight. So that's the length of this cycloid, this curve. Okay, so that's all for this video. See you later.